What's up traders, Matt from the Trade Brigade here with your weekend crypto report where as always I do a technical analysis and give you my thoughts on the coins listed up above. Our watch list has not changed so we're just going to jump right into our Bitcoin daily time frame to kick things off. In last week's video we were talking about the possibility of a confirmed fake out meaning that this move outside of our range was indeed fake and you can clearly see that was the case. So this is our daily range and as you know we are currently in the midpoint of that range if you've been watching the channel channel for any period of time, you know that our motto says our edge does not exist in the midpoint of the range. It literally exists at the edges of our range box for either a breakout or a mean reversion type trade. And the same is true, but opposite down here at the bottom, mean reversion or some sort of breakdown. So I currently don't think in the grand scheme of things, you have too much of an edge here inside of our Bitcoin daily time frame. But if you're a short term scalper, you could certainly make the argument that this is starting to turn into a little bit of a bear flag. Your flush point is going to be roughly $39,600 per coin. And if it breaks, a short term target that you could start to monitor for would be roughly around $37,500 per coin. Ultimately speaking, the target on a look above and fail is always the bottom end of the range, and that trade is still technically in play. So if you got it short somewhere up here on the look above and failure back down into the range, again, the target is technically all the way down at the bottom. If you're not trying to short Bitcoin, that's fine. Just keep in mind that this pattern could potentially pan out, and the next area of interest for buyers, at least, would be at the bottom end of the daily range, closer to $34,400 per coin. So that's what we've got in Bitcoin. Many of our crypto charts will mirror a very similar look and feel to what we're seeing right here with some sort of look above and fail, if not a more bearish pattern where it never made it outside of the range in the first place. So Bitcoin not looking great. Look at this as a short term bear flag. If you're not looking to get involved to the downside, your next area of interest is probably back down at the bottom end of our daily range. Let's continue along and talk about Ethereum. In Ethereum, we currently see a pullback as well. This one made it a little bit further outside of the daily balance. Remember that there it was here. There's your look above and fail. We're back down inside of the range. We're not quite at the midpoint in Ethereum, which lends itself to a better setup, better risk reward if you are looking to play the short side. You can see that your breakdown flush point is roughly around $3,000 per coin. And if that goes, we do have a support trend line that is still technically intact coming from the low here. There's touch number one, two, and three to confirm that trend line line, that would be your first target, depending on time of week, that could be anywhere between 2700. And let's call it 2750 into the latter half of the week. Okay, so that's the downside target. If we do see some rollover out of this short term bear flag. Um, again, if you're looking to be a buyer in Ethereum, I would wait to see what the reaction is here. If we can print a daily hammer candle down there, look for longs over the highs and a retracement back higher, this would be your first target on the bounce back to 3000 with a stop just back down underneath that support trend line in case it doesn't hold, we know that the rotation should be to the bottom end of the full range right here, much closer to 2310, 2300 even. So that's the bear setup here in Ethereum. Because this one is respecting, uh, or, well, I shouldn't say respecting, but higher up in the daily balance as opposed to Bitcoin, I would say if it does want to consolidate here, obviously that would be a considerable higher low here on the daily time frame. Your next long would be a recapture up and over 3250 if it doesn't break down from this bearish pattern that we're currently looking at. And again, there is the look above and fail. So technically speaking, you could target the bottom end of the daily range, but one step at a time here in Ethereum, I would wait for our little signpost to be hit before getting, you know, uh, more bearish as opposed to bullish on Ethereum. So that's what we've got here. Binance coin is up next. What do we see in this one? Never really making it too far out of that daily range. If I draw it in like this, you can see where we're flirting with that level, but we never really got too much acceptance outside of that. The main thing and a big difference here, as opposed to Ethereum that we just saw is that we're clearly underneath the support trend line. Now we broke it through price. And now on the back test for this little dead cat bounce, we are getting some rejection here. I wouldn't say it's confirmed yet because we have not broken these candle lows here on the daily time frame. If I just pop this on auto, that should help. There we go. Uh, so we have not broken those lows yet. So it's not confirmed that this back test is going to roll us back over. But if we start getting down underneath $411, I would say it's highly likely that you come back into these equal lows, setting up an H pattern. And from there, you could look for the better short back down into th uh, 357.90. That would be the downside play here inside of Binance coin. If the trade is going to be long, you would look for this to turn into a flag, more acceptance in here, and then another breakout opportunity up and over 446, right? I wouldn't really want to get chopped around and be fishing for longs early in this area. I would wait for the confirmation of the break of 446. Next up, we've got Cardano, and this one ultimately did not hold any of the bull flag consolidation that we were starting to put in. We gave it the benefit of the doubt. We tried to let it play out with the fib.
ribs. Remember, we came in from the low to the high. At first, there was a little bit of a bounce here at the 38.2. Ultimately, that did not hold. And you can see we currently are falling down underneath our 61.8, which is usually the line in the sand from a Fibonacci perspective. The other thing I would point out here, just from a psychological perspective, is that we are back down underneath that $1. Nice round number. Okay, so that strikes me as a bearish indication as well. More importantly than $1 just being a psychological number, remember that it also was the neckline of this double bottom from in here and also prior support around this area of the chart. So again, fairly concerned about the give back here inside of Cardano. I would look for this to pan out as a bear flag and ultimately a rotation into about 80 cents. That's the short sided trade. When and if we get here, because it's a sharp 100% retracement of that move, I would look for a little bit of a dead cat bounce. If we put in a lower high and then can make an equal low reattempt, that's where this level at the 80 cent mark does turn into a flush point. To the upside, I wouldn't really be fishing for longs until we can put in a higher low above a dollar. Something that would look like this maybe has me feeling a little bit more confident about longs, but currently not feeling it inside of Cardano. Let's move along and talk about Solana. Again, giving back much of the gain that was uh, achieved right here. More importantly, back down inside of this daily range. So you have the look above and fail. We're technically in the midpoint of this overall range right around here. So again, your edge doesn't really exist here. If you're a short-term scalper, yes, this is turning into bear flag consolidation. A breakdown underneath roughly $100, $99 takes us back down to the daily lows around 83. That's a potential short setup. For longs, again, I, I, unless this can clearly reverse back higher, turn this into a higher low from here to here, and then put in another one outside of this daily balance once again, above 118, that's your number, that's the long setup, and you would retarget this high in here around 141.50. It currently does not look like a likely scenario into the upcoming week, but keep an open mind. We know that crypto can tend to have a mind of its own. Those are the levels and scenarios I would watch for inside of Solana. Link up next. What do we see in Link? Clearly a much weaker coin compared to most things that we've just seen. It never broke out of the daily range, and it's currently sitting much closer to the bottom end of that daily range. It's currently underneath this double bottom neckline that never really held on the break and retest. So this one, it does not strike me as a solid long opportunity. Uh, I suppose if you want to use tight risk reward, if we do come down to the bottom, roughly 1250 and start printing a hammer candle, you could take it long over the hammer highs, looking for a rotation back to the top of the daily range in here, closer to 1765 with a tight stop under here. I don't think it's a high probability of working out trade, but the risk reward would make sense, noting that you're risking about this to gain about this. And you know, that's roughly what, two and a half to one, maybe three to one risk reward ratio. So again, it makes sense from a ratio perspective, but I'm not sure how high of a probability trade that would actually be. You should be prepared to stop out of that if that's something you're interested in. Uh, next up, we have Polkadot. What's going on in the dot? Again, you can see in this one, very similar to Link, it's still in this daily consolidation range. It never made it up and over the highs. We did not technically get a look above and fail. It just strikes me as choppy, to be quite frank with you. And remember also that this was a critical zone of support from back in the past, which is clearly flipped to resistance you know, bearish. There's no way around it. This is a bearish chart, right? So currently consolidating towards the lows, this is certainly turning into a bear flag. Again, the same sort of idea as what we just discussed in Link. If we get down here and you see a hammer print and you look for longs over the highs, that's great. I wouldn't push your luck all the way to the top end of the balance, noting that we do have this intermediate level around 1968. That would be the first target where I would look to take off at least three quarters of the position and then trail stop the rest to see if we can ultimately make it to the top of the range with a tight stop just underneath 16 even. So that's your risk reward trade. And again, it does make sense based on that perspective, but be prepared to take a stop out, just noting that it doesn't really strike me as a high probability of success, right? So that's what we've got there. And if it does crack the low end of the range, the next areas of interest underneath us are at 1278 and then roughly $10.50 coming from this area in here. Continuing along, crypto.com coin, it's decision time here. Uh, you can clearly see we're coming to the end of a symmetrical triangle. We're testing the low end. We're coming off of a bear flag consolidation on a smaller time frame. This would look like an H pattern. If we crack here, look to fill up the triangle and ultimately move into these lows around 37 cents. That's the bear setup here uh, in terms of looking for lower. If we do support and this turns into a micro double bottom on something like a 15 or a 30 minute time frame, your long is roughly up and over this 42 cent mark, the neckline. And I would just retarget, you know, 45 cents, the midpoint 
of this consolidation pattern, the, the tightening range of the symmetrical triangle. From there, I suppose, again, just like we talked about before, take off three quarters of the position, look to trail stop the rest. Maybe we make it to the top of the triangle. I'm not entirely sure. Again, this does strike me as a bearish setup currently, given that we do have bear consolidation and a short-term H pattern, but those are both directional levels that I would be paying attention to. Next up, we have Matic. What's going on in Matic, the gaming coin here? Uh, currently weak. Again, this is now certainly turning into a flush point with multiple lower highs uh, coming into this area of equal lows. You can see we're not getting a whole lot of acceptance on the short term. We are putting in lower highs on a candle by candle perspective. If we break down underneath 135, your next support underneath is 116 coming from, if I scrunch up the chart, this little pivot low in here, right? We had a little bit of a stair step to the upside, uh, but that's your next target ultimately. If we crack this, again, the chart to me does look more bearish than bullish, noting that it could not even make it to the top end of the range here on this most recent push higher. Uh, it's not nearly as bullish as some of the other charts that we've looked at, right? So this should be lowest on the tier in terms of looking for longs and probably looking for breakdowns inside of Matic. Again, if you're a really aggressive trader, the same sort of idea holds true. If you see a hammer down here or some sort of intraday, shorter time frame bullish pattern, maybe the risk reward is tight enough to do something like this, where you generate like a two and a half, three to one risk reward trade. It might be worth taking, but again, be prepared for a stop out. I'm not entirely sure how high of a probability that trade actually is of working out. Luna pulling back aggressively, right? This is the next one up on the chopping block, clearly underneath that support trend line. So let's get rid of that. You can clearly see we're coming into the base of this prior uh, flag right around here. So 77.36 is critical support because this is a 100% retracement and we have not seen a considerable dead cat bounce. I wouldn't really classify these two bars right here as a strong dead cat bounce. I would watch for some sort of reaction at this level, especially noting that Luna was relatively strong to the crypto market. I would watch to see if this gets bought up at 77. If so, your target's going to be right around here at 94. And if it doesn't, if we just start printing red bars that go straight through, you know, no... Uh, no sort of support, no sign of buyers whatsoever. It's probably coming all the way back down to the support trend line and this prior breakout here, noting that we have thin structure on the way up. There's not a whole lot to offer support in that general area of the chart. That number is roughly $60 depending on time of week. To the upside, if it does generate a bounce, again, your target's gonna be roughly around 94 to see if we can form some sort of head and shoulders. I do understand that that's a pretty sloppy pattern if I draw it like that, but nonetheless, if we turn off of that for a lower high, that could certainly be a pattern in play into the future here in Luna. Again, currently the crypto market is getting beat up, but this one, if it does bounce off of 77, looks like a likely opportunity for some relative strength to come back into the market. Let's continue along. Mana, Decentraland for our um, metaverse play, right? What do we see in this one? Again, relative weakness. If I look at this as an overall range that we have right here, this has already broken the low end of that range. On the little back test, we're getting resistance. And to me, it strikes me as a bear flag, a little micro H pattern. I would look for the continued rotation into 182. Anything underneath that, pretty concerning, noting that that's really where that spike came from, really thin structure on the way higher. Uh, again, there's not a whole lot to offer any support until we roughly get back down. You know, there's this prior structure around May of last year. So we'll add that on the chart, that's 160. But really, if that goes, my next area of interest would be a lot closer to about a dollar even, okay? So that's pretty concerning to the downside here inside of Decentraland. Let's quickly add in a resistance trend line that would look like this. You can see that's pretty accurate in terms of a tight fit with the anchor point, touch one, touch two, touch three in here on this most recent uh, attempt to move higher. We're also breaking the support trend line. If I were to have drawn that in, it would have looked like this clearly underneath that. So that's also a sign of breakdown here. This looks relatively weak, right? I don't need to sort of hammer it home any more than I have. Failing on the back test of the bottom end at 223, I would again look for continued rollover here. If it does break back up into that range, we have the opposite of what we just discussed in Bitcoin. And there's potential only if we have support of the entire crypto market for a look below and fail, where you could start to target the midpoint of this range, this prior structure around 250. And then maybe if like, you know, Bitcoin's really rallying hard, there's potential that this catches a tailwind to the top end at 283. But again, in terms of high probability, I'm not sure that that would be the first thing I would think about inside of the crypto space. Last but not least, we have Zcash. What's going on in Zcash? Remember what I said in last week's video, once you've recognized that a pattern has been repeating for more than two or three times, 
Oftentimes, it's too late to take advantage of it. You can go back and watch the video. I explicitly said that, and we did not hold our break and retest over the past week or so, noting that the pullback, of course, has violated this support trend line that we had here. We're firmly underneath it. You could look at this as a head and shoulders pattern, something that we had here, breaking that neckline. The question now is what's the reaction around 135? I wouldn't try to, you know, stab long or short in this general area. I would want to see, do we make it all the way here and then bounce? If we just kind of float around in here, you're probably going to get chopped up. And the better short is if we retest this area in here around 173 and start printing inverted hammers, maybe that's where the back test short can unfold for a rotation back down to that neckline, this kind of area around 135. So be a little bit skeptical in this overall zone here, noting that the structure is really well defined based on this prior high, this deep pullback low, and we're just sitting in no man's land. Okay. So I would wait for 135.50 or 173 before ultimately making your next choice inside of Zcash. If this breaks down here, our next support under underneath is really the lows of that first pullback right here around 107.39. Uh, and we also obviously covered the upside level. So that's going to wrap up the crypto video for this weekend. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything new, let me know in the comments section or by giving the video a thumbs up. Uh, as always, the weekly watch list video will be coming out as scheduled on Sunday. And with all of that being said, I wish you a green trading week.